Hey, what's up, family? Hey, today we're going to do an educational one, an old one, but a very re relevant, very relevant one. And this one, we're going to simply title it just what it is, Roe versus Wade. But we're going to give you the real information that you may not have known. For example, let's take my wife, for example, who's feminist, average female. If I said to you, Beth, uh, what does Roe versus Wade mean and how could you give a, in a simple, short form of what Roe versus Wade mean before I, we started reading on this and I explained all this to you, but what would you have said? Okay, for as far as I understand, Roe is a female. She's pregnant. She wants an abortion, but Wade is the state who is against of her, her getting an abortion. Very good. Now, that's that's not a bad answer, but here, check this out. That's, that's correct. That is partially correct and it is partially uh, incorrect. So let me give you the actual 100% answer of Roe versus Wade. And she's right. Roe being Jane Roe and Wade being the lawyer, which was the state Henry Wade against, Henry Wade was against abortion where Jane Roe wanted the abortion and it was she was wanted a woman's choice a woman's right to choose and they was like no but let me tell you something else about jane Roe. did you know that's not even her real name see most people didn't even know that see her real name was norma mccurvey norma mccurvey that is her real name and there's a reason why she changed it to jane doe and i'm going to explain that to you but first, let's give you the story of Jane Roe, a.k.a., uh, I'm sorry, of Norma McCorvey, a.k.a. Jane Roe. Let's give you her story. See, as a child, her, her mother, quote from, from one of the papers, her quote from her mother said that her daughter was a wild, wild one. She was just real wild, real promiscuous, out in the streets and all kind of nonsense. A real wild, wild one. At a very early age, her father left her and the mother. The mother even admitted she was a very hardcore alcoholic and she used to beat the hell out of her daughter constantly. One day the daughter uh, robbed a gas station, whatever, and she was locked up. She became a ward of the state. Later, uh, the same girl, Norma, remember her real name is Norma McCorvey. Then later, one of, a male figure in her family took custody of her and repeatedly raped her for years. So this is her real story. Remember, her name is Norma McCurvey, AKA Jane Roe. Watch how I explain how this Jane Roe came into play. Watch, it's gonna make perfect sense. So anyway, and we know how that story went when she was getting raped by her own family members. We know how back in those days, how white women will always say, I was raped by a black man. That's a whole nother story, but this is what really happened to her. So later in life, when at her early teens, she wound up getting pregnant. She, she got some with some guy named Woodley. And then they got married. They had their first kid. Then she said Woodley was beating her like crazy. And she wanted out of that relationship. So she was willing to give up her child for adoption. But her mother took custody of her first child. Then later in life, with all her drinking, promiscuity, uh, out running the streets, as her mother said, wild, wild one, right? Now she had her second child by an unknown guy who no one knows. She never admitted who it was, but she was in she was in extreme poverty and going through lots of depression, you know, stuff like that. So now um, with the two kids, uh, she wanted to give up that one for adoption, but she's dealing with it whatever way she could. Around the late 60s, by 1969, she uh, wound up getting pregnant with her third child. And being a person with such extreme poverty, uh, very poor, and uh, dealing with so much depression because of this or whatever the case of her circumstances of growing up and all that, she wanted an abortion. And that was right around the time in Texas, they had shut down all the abortion clinics. So she seek refuge to an abortion lawyer. And they uh, got her in contact with these two lawyers. There's no need to mention the names. And then that's when they started this whole case where they, they said, we're going to have you. Because she was pregnant at the time. And she wanted to give that child up for abortion. And they said, no, no, no. 
let's not do abortion. Let's fight this in the case. The Supreme Court, let's take it all the way. And the lady said, no, I didn't want it. I don't want to fight. I just want an abortion. Little did she know. Do you know one of the ladies that was a lawyer had just had an abortion? And like she later said in life, she could have just simply told me where she got her abortion. And I would have got my abortion. And none of this would have happened. Lady never told her. Lady said, no, we need you to stay pregnant because we need you to be the face of a, a woman's choice and women's rights. We need you to be the face of it. Check this out. They even paid her. She admitted this later. Within her lifetime of this course, of this whole case, she wound up getting over $450,000 worth of uh, revenue just to be the face of this, which later she recanted her story where she said it didn't matter if a woman get abortion or not. It's no skin off her teeth. It don't matter. Now, not always. I know I love to give y'all word of the day. The word of the day is going to be recant. If you look up the word recant, it simply means to change a story or belief or something like that. You hear it a lot in, a lot in court proceedings as well where a person may say this. How many times have you heard of exoneration cases, right? When someone say, yeah, it was this what happened. And then later they go, oh, well, maybe it didn't happen. You know, I, I was, the police forced me to say that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's back to my story. So now these lawyers convinced her to keep her pregnancy. Don't get an abortion. We're going to even pay you to keep your baby and be the face of women's choice and we're going to take this to the Supreme Court. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want my name in a paper and all this. I don't want this publicity. So then they came up with this scheme where they said, well, okay, still follow this case too. And we're going to pay you. And you don't have to use your name, which is Norma McCurvey. They said, why don't you use the name Jane Rowe? Jane Rowe. And the guy that was fighting her from the state, his name was Henry Wade. So they told her, use the name, instead of your real name, Norma McCurvey, use the name Jane Rowe. Now, let me explain something to y'all. Watch, watch how this comes together. It makes perfect sense. When the authorities find, and, and all these court proceedings, all these, uh, these missing files, uh, uh, the police, when they find a dead body, right? Uh, when people doing autopsies, right? When they have a dead body and they have absolutely no identification to identify the body, if it's a guy, what do they name the, the dead body that has no identification? They name the dead body what? John Doe, right? Mm -hmm. John Doe for a guy, a male that don't have, they can't identify. Whenever it's a woman, follow me here, people, follow me. Whenever it's a woman that don't have no identification and it's dead on a slap, what do they name the woman? Jane Doe. You get it? What is her name? She didn't want to go by a dead body name. So instead of saying Jane Doe, she went with Jane Rowe. You get it now? That's why her name became AKA. It, it was really, her name is really Norma. McCurvey, but they said, let's name you Jane Rowe. Do y'all understand where I'm going with this? That's where that name come from because there really was no person named Jane Rowe. That doesn't exist. It's a made up name. But anyway, so they followed this all the way to the Supreme Court. It took three years before they finally came up with a, with a decision. And guess what? By that three years, she been done had her baby and everything. And many, and during that whole, she became the face of women's choice and all this. And like she said on many occasions where she recanted her story, changed it. She said, look, I never was for abortion or against abortion. It's just that they was willing to pay me. I was a very poor woman. I've been battered and bruised all my life. I had nothing, no support or nothing. And they was willing to pay me to just keep quiet and keep hushed of this. So I needed the money. I took the money and I didn't have to use my real name, which was Norma McCurvey, and said I could use this Jane Rowe. Remember, Jane Doe for woman, John Doe for men. Instead of being labeled, labeled a dead person, Jane Doe, let's go with Jane Rowe. That's where that name come from. But she clearly admitted it didn't matter. She wasn't for or against abortion. It didn't matter. But what did matter? Y'all gonna pay me for this? Okay, I'll be the face of it. But she said many years later, this was one of the worst decisions of her life because it cost her so much headache going through all this nonsense. And all along, it was bull crap. 
She never had, she never got an abortion. She never got an abortion. Never. She had all three of her kids, but all three different men, and none of them in her life. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? There's just something for you guys to know out there. A little different. Thought I'd educate y'all, because I know a lot of y'all don't want to read these stories, but nothing I said was made up fictitious, or it's right there in the palm of your hands, in the library, in the book, you can read this up. For, for the few of you that don't want to read, that's why I do these videos. I actually like to read, so I present them to you verbally, opposed to you have to actually read them. Okay? On that note, subscribe, share, like, and comment. Peace.